a pillar of men, a pillar of men. Hmm. Give me the book, the book of Isaiah. Okay, give me the book of Isaiah, chapter 28. Isaiah chapter 28 and verse 12. Isaiah 3, start at this, start at this 9. Isaiah 28, 28 verse 9. Okay. The book of Isaiah chapter 28 verse 9. Mm -hmm. Whom shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Come on. Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. Read verse 9 again. The book of Isaiah, the 28th verse 9. Come on. Whom shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Read. Really? Them that are weaned from milk and drawn from the breast. So now, this is Isaiah speaking, okay? Hmm. I was looking at something, okay? Um, I don't know. Let me see if I should get that first. No, 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 no. Read verse 9 again. Read verse 9 again. Okay, read verse 9 one more again. The book of Isaiah 28, verse 9. Come on. Whom shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and thrown from the breast. So now Isaiah is talking in the spirit of Christ. Okay. It says, Whom shall he teach knowledge? Who must the most high God teach his knowledge? Okay. And to whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Whom shall the Lord make to understand his doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. So the only those that the Lord is going to teach his knowledge and teach his doctrine, his doctrine are those that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. Watch this. Give me the book of First Peter, okay? First Peter, chapter 2. First Peter 2 and verse 2. First Peter 2 and 2. Let's get that. We need to go, we're going here to understand the milk is making reference to. It says, them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast are those that the Lord will teach his knowledge and make to understand his doctrine. Because his doctrine is his knowledge. Watch this. First Peter. Okay. First Peter 2 and 2. Get that? First book of Peter 2 verse 2. As newborn babes, mm -hmm. desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow their body. You see that thing? It says, desire the sincere milk of the word. The sincere. You understand? The sincere milk of the word that you may grow their body. So the milk is the word. You understand? When you go back to where was that now? Okay. Isaiah 28 verse 9. The book of Isaiah. So the 28 verse 9. Read. Whom? Shall he teach knowledge? Come on. And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Read. Them that are weaned from the milk. Come on. And drawn from the breast. He says, them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. Meaning what? The, for, for you to receive God's knowledge, for you to receive God's doctrine, to understand it, you must be like a child sucking on his mother's breast. That's how you must suck the information out of his Bible. Like a baby sucking milk from his mother's breast. That's how you must be. Because how, how long, how many times does the baby does it? On a daily basis. Okay, a newborn baby, that's what they do. They'll be sucking on their mother's breast day in and day out. 24 hours, that's what they do. They just live to eat. They'll be sucking milk from their mother's breast. So that's how we must be when it comes to this Bible. Okay, read that part again, verse 9. The book of Isaiah 28, verse 9. Mm -hmm. Whom shall he teach knowledge? Come on. And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Mm -hmm. They that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. So let's understand what are these breasts he's making reference to. Give me that in Matthew chapter 13, verse 52. Matthew chapter 13, verse 52. The book of Matthew, chapter 13, verses 52. Read. Then said he unto them, Therefore, every scribe which is instructed unto the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is an householder. Come on. Which bringeth forth out of his treasures things 
new and old. You see that thing? You must bring forth out of your treasure things new and old. The things that you are bringing that are new and old, that's the breath. That's why it says breath, sura. The breath is making reference to the old covenant and the new covenant because the whole Bible is profitable for doctrine and instruction. Okay? That's why it's true. That's why it says breath, plural. Old covenant, new covenant. Go back to Isaiah 28 now. This is verse 10. The book of Isaiah, so 28 verse 10. For precept must be upon precept. Come on. Precept upon precept. Line upon line. Line upon line. Here a little and there a little. Read that again. The book of Isaiah 28 verse 10. For precept must be upon precept. Mm -hmm. Precept upon precept. Line upon line. Line Come upon on. line. Read. Here a little. Here a little. And there a little. So those that are those that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast, to them... Precept must be upon precept. It's not a suggestion. So those that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast, precept must be. He didn't say should be, must be upon precept. Precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. Only those that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast, precept must be upon precept. Go ahead. Verse 11. Four. With stampering lips and another tongue, will he speak to these people? You see that thing for with stammering lips and another tongue. So the stammering lips is another tongue, meaning this Bible will be taught in multiple languages because in the last days we will be scattered among all nations and they're going to speak unto us in foreign languages. Okay, read to whom he said. This is the rest wherewith ye may cause the weary to rest. You see that part right there? To and whom this said, hold on. The whom is the ones that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. Those are the ones that he says, to whom he said, this is the rest wherewith ye may cause the weary to rest. This Bible right here, this is our pillar of rest. Okay? And to those, it's going to be a rest to those that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. From the breast and precept must be upon precept. Okay? Read that again with four. The book of Isaiah, chapter 28, verse 12. Come on. To whom, he said, this is the rest wherewith ye may cause the weary to rest. Come on. And this is the refreshing, yet they would not hear. He says, but this is the refreshing. So the Bible is what's going to refresh our spirit. It's what's going to renew our mind. Okay? It's going to refresh us. It's going to renew us. And the Bible will be our rest. Okay? The knowledge, the doctrine, that is going to be our rest in these last days. Read it again. Verse 12. Chapter 28, verse 12. This is the rest wherewith ye may cause the weary to rest. Come on. And this is the refreshing, yet they would not hear. Watch this. Give me Matthew chapter 11 now. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. Matthew 11, verse 28. The book of Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. You see that part? And are heavy laden. He says, come unto me, all ye that labor, okay, and are heavy laden, and I will what? And I will give you rest. You see what, the, you see what Christ is saying? He says, come unto me, all ye that labor. Give me the book of Isaiah chapter 14, verse 3. Isaiah chapter 14, verse 3. The book of Isaiah chapter 14, verse 3. Read. Really? come to pass in the day that the Lord shall give thee rest from thy sorrow. You see that thing? The Lord is going to give us rest from our sorrows. You know? And from thy fear. Uh -huh. And from the hard bondage wherein thou wast made to serve. You see, that's the labor. He says, come unto me all ye that labor. That's the hard bondage that we are in. The Bible is our rest. He says, I will give you rest unto your soul. 
Go back to where he was at, Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 again. The book of Matthew, chapter 11, verses 28. Come unto me, all ye that labor mm -hmm. and are heavy laden. Come on. I will give you rest. And I will give you rest. And I will give you rest. So the Lord is promised. This is Christ speaking here. It says, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. We're heavy laden with what? Sins. It says, and I will give you rest. Because this is our rest. The Bible is our pillar of rest. Because Christ is in this Bible. Read on. To nine. Take my yoke upon you. Uh -huh. And learn of me. Read. For I am meek and lowly in heart. Come on. And ye shall find rest unto your souls. You see that part right there? And ye shall find rest unto your souls. Because guess what? In spirit, we are weary. Our spirit is tired, is exhausted, is worn out. That's why it says, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. Because guess what? The first thing that must have rest is our souls. We must have, we, our souls must rest. Because right now, our souls have no rest. The mind is always wandering. The mind is always all over the place. Christ says, I'm going to give you rest unto your souls. Come unto me, all ye that labor, hard bondage, and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Okay, read that again, verse 29. The book of Matthew, chapter 11, verse 29. Take ye, take my yoke upon you, and learn of me, for I am meek and and ye shall find rest unto your souls. Come on. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Read that part again. The book of Matthew, chapter 11, verse 30. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. He says his yoke is easy, and his burden is light. Because the Bible is what's going to what? It was going to give us rest. The Bible is a pillar of rest. Because Christ is come comes in the volume of the book, and He's the one that will give us rest, rest unto our souls. So the first thing first to hear is what our souls must be given what peace and rest. That's why we need to keep the commandments in the space of Christ. And the only way we're gonna be able to what to rest unto our souls before the Lord returns. Give me the book of Psalms chapter four, verse five. Watch this, Psalms chapter four, verse five. Read that. The book of Psalms, chapter 4, verses 5. Come on. Up the sacrifices of righteousness and put your trust in the Lord. You see that thing? It says, offer the sacrifices of righteousness. This is how we're going to be able to what? To, to get rest. He says, come unto me, all ye that labor, and I will give you rest. Rest unto our souls. How do we do that? How do we get rest unto our souls? We must offer the sacrifices of righteousness. Because no longer are we under the law of animal sacrifice, we are under Christ now. We offer the sacrifices of righteousness without the law of animal sacrifice. Read that part again. The book of Psalms, chapter 4, verse 5. Offer the sacrifices of righteousness and put your trust in the Lord. And put your trust in the Lord. Watch this. There are 35 and 1. Ecclesiasticus, chapter 35 and verse 1. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 35, verses 1. Read. He that keepeth the law bringeth offerings enough. He that taketh heed to the commandments offereth the peace offering. You read that again, verse 1. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 35, verse 1. He that keepeth the law bringeth offerings enough. Mm -hmm. He that taketh heed to the commandments offereth a peace offering. So when we keep God's commandments, that's how we offer the sacrifices of righteousness. We are offering a peace offering so that there be peace between us and the Lord. Give me that book of Isaiah chapter 26. Isaiah chapter 26 and verse 3. The book of Isaiah 26 verse 3. Read. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, mm -hmm. whose mind is stayed on thee, right? He, he trusts in thee. You see that thing? Read that again. The book of Isaiah, so 26, verse 3. 
thou wilt keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusts in thee. So the Lord will keep you in perfect peace. You're going to give your rest to your soul, okay, whose mind is stayed on thee. Your mind is rooted and grounded on the laws of God. That's how you're going to see that this Bible is a pillar of rest. Go ahead. Because he trusted in thee. Because he trusted in thee. Hold this. Go back to Psalms chapter 4, verse 5. Psalms chapter 4 and verse 5. The book of Psalms, chapter 4, verse 5. Read. Offer the sacrifices of righteousness and put your trust in the Lord. And put your trust in the Lord. So you offer sacrifices of righteousness and you put your trust in the Lord. That's how the Lord is going to keep you in perfect peace. The Lord will give you rest to your soul because you are offering the sacrifices of righteousness and you are putting all your trust upon the most High God. That's how we're going to be able to what? That's how you're going to see this Bible as a pillar of rest. That is what the Lord is saying to us. Okay? Go back. Go back to Isaiah, to Isaiah 28, verse 12. Isaiah 28, verse 12. Read that again. The book of Isaiah, so the 28, verse 12. Read. Two. This is the rest wherewith ye may cause the weary to rest. You may cause the weary to rest. Go ahead. And this is a refreshing, yet they would not hear. Watch this. Give me Isaiah 33 now. Isaiah 33, verse 6. Watch this. The book of Isaiah, chapter 33, verse 6. Mm -hmm. And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times. You see that part right there? And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times. I mean, wisdom and knowledge is what's going to give as rest is going to give us peace. Rest unto our soul. Read that again. The book of Isaiah, chapter 33, verse 6. Come on. And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy, time, of thy times. Read. And strength of salvation. Mm -hmm. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. You see that part right there? And strength of salvation because the Lord is our strength. The most like God is our strength. So what's going what's gonna to give us rest, what's going to give us peace is the wisdom and knowledge of the most like God because that's the spirit of Christ. Verse 6 again. The book of Isaiah, chapter 33, verse 6. And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times. Mm -hmm. And strength of salvation. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. Watch this. Give me the book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 7, verse 22. Wisdom of Solomon 7, verse 22. Read that. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 7, verses 22. Come on. For wisdom, which is the worker of all things, taught me. Uh -huh. For in her is an understanding spirit. Read that part again. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 7, verses 24. Come on. For wisdom is more moving than any emotion. Uh -huh. She passeth and goeth through all things by reason of her pureness. So now, the wisdom of the Most High God is our rest. God's laws is where we're supposed to rest our soul. You understand? The wisdom of the Lord is where we are going to find rest. That is what the Lord has promised us, and that's what we're going to get. Read that again. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 7, verse 24. Read. For wisdom is more moving than any motion. Mm -hmm. She passes through. She passes and goes through all things by reason of her pureness. So now watch this. It says wisdom is more moving than any motion. So wisdom is that rest. Because the wisdom is actually going into Christ. Go back to Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. Matthew 11, verse 28. The book of Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. So Christ is promising us that we must what? We must labor. 
those that are those of uh, out of uh, of us as a people that are laboring in hard bondage and are heavy laden with sin, it says He will give us rest, rest for our souls. Next verse. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Mm -hmm. For I am meek and lowly in heart. Come on, and he shall find rest unto your souls. So Christ is promising us that we're gonna find rest unto our souls. All this before we go to the Book of Solomon, give me the book of Colossians. Okay, give me Colossians chapter chapter one. Colossians chapter one. Give me Colossians chapter one and verse nine. Colossians chapter one verse nine. You know what? Start at verse eight. Colossians 1 verse 8. The book of Colossians 1 verse 8. Who also declared unto us, who also declared unto us your love in the spirit. He says, who also declared unto us your love in spirit, the spirit of what? The spirit of Christ. The Bible, the rest wherewith the Lord is going to what? He's going to give us rest for our souls when he returns. But right now, we are offering spirit, the we are offering sacrifices of righteousness so that the Lord can give us what? Rest. He's going to give us peace of mind when we keep his commandments. Go ahead. For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you. We don't stop to pray for you. So we must pray for the brothers and sisters in the congregation. And our brothers and sisters that are not in this truth, we must pray for them that the Lord give them what? Give them mercy so they can repent. Go ahead. And to desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge of his will. So the desire is that, hold on, the desire is that our people might be filled with the knowledge of his will. Give me that in Psalms chapter 40, verse 8. Okay, the knowledge of his will. Psalms 40, verse 8. Let's understand the will of the Father. Because our people today, they don't know what the will of God is. Okay. Psalm chapter 40, verse 8. The book of Psalms chapter 40, verse 8. Come on. I delight to do thy will. Oh my God, yea, thy law is within my heart. You see what David is saying? I delight to do thy will, oh my God. Yea, thy law is within my heart. That is the will of the Father. Okay, go back to where was that? The book of Colossians chapter 1, verse 9. The book of Colossians chapter 1 verse 9. Mm -hmm. For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, really? do not see to pray for you. Come on. And to desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge of his will uh -huh. in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. You see that thing? That's the rest. The rest is wisdom and spiritual understanding. We must understand what the scriptures say. We must know the will of God. Now that we know it, this is our rest now. That's where we are going to rest our souls. Okay, come on. That ye might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing. That we might what? Walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing. Really? Being fruitful in every good work. Uh -huh. And increasing in the knowledge of God. You see that thing? It says, we might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Because once we find rest, guess what we're going to do? You ever plant a tree? Once the tree finds a good ground and it's watered and the soil is, is, the soil is fertile, guess what happens? The tree, will find, the tree has found rest. Then the tree will grow. The tree will bear fruit. Okay? That is what the Lord wants for us. Watch this. Give me the book of Psalms, okay? Before you give me Psalms, give me the book of Hebrews. Give me Hebrews. Give me Hebrews chapter 13, verse 21. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 21. The book of Hebrews chapter 13, verses 21. No. Yeah, yeah, come on, come on. Make you perfect. Make you perfect in every good work uh -huh. to do his will. You see that part right there? It says, the Lord, the Lord he says he's going to make us perfect in every good work when we do the will of the Father, which is keeping his commandments, because that's where our rest is found. 
Our rest is found when we keep the laws of God. Our peace is going to come from us observing and applying what is written. Read. Come on. Make you perfect in every good work to do his will. Mm -hmm. Working in you that which is well pleasing in his sight. Because when we do the will of the Father, when we keep his laws, it says, guess what? The Lord says he's going to work in us that which is well pleasing in his sight. Read on. Through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. You see that part right there? So now, this is what the Lord wants for us. If we want that rest, we want, we want, we want a pillar of rest, which is this Bible, Christ. The spirit of Christ must work in us. What is the spirit of Christ? The commandment. God's laws. That's the spirit of Christ. So he is that pillar of rest. You understand? Christ is the pillar of rest. Watch this. Give me the book of Psalms. Okay? Psalms chapter 1. Mm. You know what? I don't think I want to go to Psalms now. Give me Colossians. Go back to Colossians chapter 2. Colossians 2 verse 7. Watch this. Colossians chapter 2, verse 7. The book of Colossians chapter 2, verse 7. Uh -huh. Rooted and built up in him. He says what? Rooted and built up in him. So we must be rooted and built up in Christ. We must have roots in this Bible. That's how we are going to be able to find rest. The only way you can find rest in this Bible, Christ be the pillar of your rest, guess what? You must be rooted and grounded. Because if you are rooted and grounded, that means the root is going down deeper and deeper into the ground and the tree is becoming stronger and stronger and producing fruit. You see that thing? Read that part again. The book of Colossians, chapter 2, verse 7. Read. Rooted and built up in him. And, stab and, stab and established in the faith. Oski, as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Read Colossians 2 verse 7 again, okay? The book of Colossians 2 verse 7, mm -hmm. rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith. Uh -huh. As ye have been taught. As ye have been what? As ye have been taught. So the only way you can be rooted and built up in Christ, meaning you have roots, your, meaning your spirit has taken root, okay, in this Bible. Your spirit has found rest in this Bible, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith as he has been taught. Meaning for you to be rooted and grounded in this Bible so that you can find rest, guess what you must be? You must be taught how to. You're not going to be able to do that on your own. You must be taught. That's why we have councils set up so men and women can seek counsel. So we guide you in the scriptures to be rooted and grounded in Christ. Read on. The book of Colossians, chapter 2, verse 7. Rooted and built up in him and established in the faith. Uh -huh. As ye have been taught, abounding therein, with thanksgiving because that's the only that's when you give the thanks because now you are rooted and grounded in christ you have found rest christ is your pillar of rest you see that thing now give me the book of ephesians chapter 3 ephesians chapter 3 verse 16 watch this the book of ephesians chapter 3 verse 16 uh -huh. that he would grant that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory right to be Strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. Read that again, verse 16. The book of Ephesians 3, verse 16. That he would grant you according to the riches of his glory. Mm -hmm. To be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. So the spirit of Christ is what's going to strengthen you. The spirit of Christ is what's going to strengthen you. Because the pillar of rest is something that when you're resting against that pillar, that pillar is not going to fall. You are resting. And when somebody is resting, they are relaxed. So that's what Christ wants for our mind, our spirit. That's why you shall find rest unto your soul. Learn of me. Take my yoke and learn of me. And you're going to find rest unto your souls. That's what Christ is saying right there. 
Next verse, verse 17. That Christ may dwell in your hearts by that, faith. That what? That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. You see that thing? Christ may dwell in our hearts by faith. Because by faith, that's how we want to please the Lord. And faith is not just believing. Faith is you applying the laws of God. If faith is an action thing. Okay, come on. That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye, being rooted and grounded in love. You see that part right there? Remember it says we must be grounded. You must be rooted and grounded. Yes, it says being rooted and grounded in love. That's the only way you're going to be able to find rest for your soul. You must be rooted and grounded in the love of Christ, in the love of God. Give me that in First John chapter 5. First John 5 and 3. Let's see what the love of God is. You must be rooted and grounded in love. That's how you find rest. This Bible, this Bible is going to be a pillar of rest only if you are rooted and grounded in love. Read that, First John. First book of John, chapter 5, verse 3. For this is the love of God. Come on. That we keep his commandments. That we keep his commandments. The love of God is that we keep his commandments. See? And his commandments are not grievous. And his commandments are not difficult. Because we make it difficult. We are the ones that make the laws of God difficult. But the Bible is telling you God's laws are not difficult to apply. We make it difficult for ourselves to apply because what? We are bound with our sin. We don't want to let go of the laws that we're breaking. We don't want to let go of our lust, our evil, our hatred. You understand? That's why we, we make it difficult. Because we are one with our sins. We don't want to repent from those sins. Go back to Colossians. Chapter 3, verse 17. The book of Colossians. No, no, Ephesians. I'm sorry, Ephesians 3, 17. Ephesians 3, verse 17. The book of Ephesians, chapter 3, verse 17. That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. Come on. That ye, being rooted and grounded in love. Come on. He says, being rooted and grounded in love. In order for you to be what? To find rest for your soul, to this Bible be a pillar of rest, you must be rooted and grounded in the laws of God. That's how this Bible is going to be a pillar of rest unto you. Give me Colossians chapter 1, verse 23. Watch this. Come on. The book of Colossians, chapter 1, verse 23. Read. If you continue in the faith, mm -hmm. grounded and settled. You see that thing? It says, if you continue in faith, if you continue in the faith, meaning what? The faith of Christ. If you continue in the faith of Christ, grounded and settled. So you must be grounded and you must be settled. You ever hear somebody says, you know, now I'm settled now. We want to, we want to settle down. You ever hear these talks in the world? We want to, a couple saying we want to settle down now. We are tired of running around and all of that. Or a brother decides he wants to get married. He doesn't want to be a whore manga anymore. A sister decides to want to get married. She doesn't want to be a whore anymore. She says, no, I want to settle down. Meaning what? She wants to rest now. He wants to rest. The Bible must be like that. The laws of God is what's going to ground you and settle you. That's how you're going to find this Bible as a pillar of rest. Read the part again. If you continue in the faith, grounded and settled. You see that thing? If, if you continue in the faith, not, you must not hear the word of God and now you, you no longer want to hear the Bible. You don't want to apply the laws of God anymore. You don't want to get together with the brethren. No, no. It says if you continue, meaning what? You must endure. You must fight to keep the laws of God on a daily, on a daily basis. That's why it says, if you continue in the faith, grounded and settled. You understand? Read on. And be not moved away from the hope of the gospel. Be, don't be. It says, and be not moved Your away. Prayer. Hold on. And be not moved away from the hope of the gospel. You must be rooted and settled or grounded and settled. You understand? You must be grounded and settled. 
and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel. The hope of the gospel is that we keep the commandments, we endure until the end, we are going to get delivered. And when we really get delivered, we're going to rule all nations on earth, we're going to dominate them, we're going to live forever. You see that thing? Only if we continue in the faith, grounded and settled. Read. And be not moved to the gospel, which ye have heard, and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven. Whereof I, Paul, am, am made a minister. So the apostle Paul was made a minister to go and teach the Gentiles. But the key here is, you must, if you continue the faith, you must well, you continue the faith grounded and settled. You understand? That's the only way the Bible will become a pillar of rest unto you. You must be rooted and grounded in love. Grounded and settled. That's what the Lord wants. I give an analogy of a tree. When you plant a tree on good soil and it's got manure, the soil is, the soil is prepared for the tree to be planted. There's manure, you understand? Um, there's, it's, it's the good soil that we have there. And there's, you know what, you water it regularly. Guess what? Once the tree takes root, that tree is going to be grounded and settled. It will, be stay, it will stand there for years. It will get better with time. You understand? It will get better with time. Um, recently, I was in Limpopo, right? And there was this tree that I saw. From the time I was still a child, as long as I can remember when I was still a small baby, maybe five years old. Guess what? That tree is still standing today. And it, guess what? Every year, you see, like it, it has, um, you can see the tree is not dead. The tree is still operating. That tree is, is more than is more than 37 years old, that tree. It's been standing. Of all the seasons that has been, that tree has been standing right there. Just imagine that thing, because that tree on that soil is rooted and it's settled. You see that part right there? It's rooted, it's grounded, and it's settled. Watch this. Now, why am I bringing this up? I'm bringing this up because if, if the Bible is your, if you, you, you love the laws of God, you want to apply the commandments of the Most High God, you are going to be rooted and grounded. The Bible, is, then the Bible is your pillar of rest. Watch this. Give me the book of Psalms, chapter 1, verse 1. Psalms. Give me Psalms 1, verse 1. You know what? Before you get that, give me Mark. Give me Mark, chapter 8. Mark, chapter 8, um, and verse 24. Mark 8, 24. Watch this. The book of Mark, chapter 8, verses 24. Come on. And he looked up and said, I see men as trees walking. He says, I see men as trees walking. I see men as trees walking. So now he's giving you a similitude. He's, he's making a similarity. Uh, he's comparing a man to a tree. You understand? Watch this. Give me the book of Ecclesiastes. Right, chapter 27. Okay, Ecclesiastes chapter 27 and verse 6. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 27 verse 6. Read. The fruit declareth if the tree have been dressed. You see that thing? The fruit will tell you if this tree is, is settled, is grounded and settled, is sitting on good soil. The fruit of that tree will tell you. If it's coming, if the, if the tree is not sitting on good ground, guess what? The fruit will tell you, mm -mm, that's not a good fruit. But if the tree is sitting on good ground, guess what? You're going to be able to tell. It's going to be sweet. It's going to be juicy. You understand? It's going to be fresh. Read that again. Let's see. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 27, verse 6. Read. The fruit declareth if the tree has been dressed. You see that thing? The fruit will tell you if that tree has been well dressed. Now give me Psalms 1 and 1. The book of Psalms. The book of Psalms, chapter 1, verse 1. Read. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Read. No standeth in the way of the sinners. Mm -hmm. 
nor sit it in the seat of the scornful. So it says, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. The counsel of the ungodly is what? Is the things of the world. Celebrating Christmas, New Year, Mother's Day, Father's Day, um, uh, New Year, you understand? Easter. That's the counsel of the ungodly. That is not of the Lord. It does the counsel of the ungodly. Because our people, you know what I've noticed lately? Our, I said, remember during December, our people, because now we are saying the Bible says don't celebrate Christmas, but guess what? On December the 25th, they were gathering together. But when you ask them, they said, no, but I'm, no, well, I'm not celebrating this thing. I don't celebrate it. But why are you gathering together? It's just a normal day, is it not? But they still gather together, honoring that day. That's the counsel of the ungodly. Okay? Read that part again. The book of Psalms, chapter 1, verse 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Read. No standeth in the way of the sinners. Uh -huh. No seat is in the seat of the scornful. When it says standeth in the way of sinners, the way of sinners is what? They like to do. They occupy themselves in breaking God's commandments. They are consumed by breaking God's laws. That's the life they, they that's the life they want. They chosen that life. Whenever you are, no matter how many times you teach them, keep the commandments, they will not do it. Okay, read on, verse two. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. Uh -huh. and, in, and in his law does he meditate day and night. You see that part right there? It says, but his delight. So this man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, his delight is in the laws of God. Meaning this man, this brother right here, this sister right here, they delight. Their joy is in applying God's laws, examining themselves, getting themselves right. They have a lying spirit. You know what? I'm going to sit down and examine myself. I've got an evil spirit. I'm going to sit down and examine myself and get rid of this thing. I hate my, my, my neighbor. I hate my brother. Guess what? I must examine myself and get rid of that evil spirit that I have. That's why it says, he shall do what? His delight is in the law of God. And in his laws, in the laws of God, he meditates day and night. You understand? He's always thinking about the laws of God, how to apply it, how to discipline his thoughts. You see that thing? Give me that in Sarat chapter 6, verse 37. Ecclesiastes chapter 6, verse 37. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 6, verse 37. Mm -hmm. Let thy mind be upon the ordinances of the Lord. Come on. And meditate continually in his commandments. And do what? Meditate continually in his commandments. He says you must meditate continually in God's law. So, because a lot of the times, you ever see people that are, they love soccer. Their mind is consumed by soccer. You know, they cannot wait for pirates to play. They cannot wait for chip to play. Or those that are consumed by top bet. You understand? Lotto. Sport. What do they call it? Sport stake. Everything, their whole life is numbers. Yeah. They are sitting down. You know what? Yeah, he is on TP. Pupe number seven. Pupe number 12. Yeah. Yeah, he is yeah, Puma stars. They are consumed by that. Every waking day of their life is about that. Guess what? The laws of God is supposed to be like that as well. Every day, your waking moment of your life must be about the laws of God. How to get yourself right, how to make, how to apply the laws of God. How to deal with your wife, how to deal with your husband, how to deal with your children, so how to deal with your brother, so on and so forth. Okay, read that part again. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 6, verse 37. Let thy mind be upon the ordinances of the Lord and meditate continually in his commandments, he shall establish thine heart and give thee wisdom and thine own desire. You see that part when it says he shall establish thine heart, meaning your mind is going to be rooted and grounded, grounded and settled. That's why it says he will establish your mind. Your mind is going to be rooted and grounded in the laws of God. Guess what? You will find that pillar of rest. You will understand it. Because you will see the benefits of you resting on God's law. That's why you will, the Lord says, I will establish your mind. I will ground and settle your mind in my law. That's what the Lord is saying right there. Because guess what? This man, this woman, 
they are meditating continually on God's law. Give me Sarah 22, verse 17. The book of Ecclesiastic is 22, verse 17. A heart settled upon the thought of understanding uh -huh. is a fair placering on the wall of a gallery. You see that there? It says a heart settled, a mind. If your mind is settled on a thought of understanding, what is the thought of understanding? The laws of God. Your mind is meditating, is settled. When something is settled, meaning you are resting, you have no worries, you don't think about anything negative, you are positive. You are, well, you are optimistic about the future. You have faith. You see that thing right there? That's why it says, a mind settles upon a thought of understanding. Meaning what? Settles upon the laws of God. You are, you, are, you, are, you are meditating on a scripture. You know what? This scripture, when it's read, it hits me, it hit me to the core. You are settled. Your mind is settled on the scripture. You meditate upon it. Guess what? It starts to, it starts to manifest in you. Okay? It says, it's as a fair plastering on the wall of a garden. You know those people that um, those people that are into art, people that are into art, you be looking at a painting, right? You look at the painting of the Mona Lisa, the painting of uh, whatever, okay? You're looking at the painting. You, the people that are into art, they will stand there for about an hour just watching the painting. They'll be seeing things that a normal person is not going to see. A normal person is not going to see here, you know, you know those lines, it's got non-linear lines, you see. All of it is symmetrical. No, it's this. Because they, they, they what? Their mind is on, they, they, their mind meditates upon art. So guess what? It says the laws of God must be like that. It must be as like, as if you're looking at a painting, you're looking how beautiful it is, the way in which they mix the colors, whatever. That's how you must be when it comes to the laws of God. That's how your mind becomes settled. You see that thing? That's how you meditate. Go back to Psalm now, chapter 1, verse 2. The book of Psalms, chapter 1, verse 2. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. Really? And in his law that he meditate day and night. Come on. And he shall be like a tree. He shall be what? Planted like a tree. He says, this man, he says, this man shall be like a tree. So they are likening and they like they are likening a man. King David is likening a man to a tree. He says, this man shall be like a tree. That's why I was giving the analogy of a tree that I saw that is over 87 years old. Read, read that again, verse, verse three. The Book of Psalms, chapter one, verse three, mm -hmm. and he shall be like a tree Come on. planted by the rivers of water. You see that thing? That when you, when this Bible becomes a pillar of rest for your soul, you are going to be like that tree planted by the rivers of water. Give me that in Ephesians chapter 5 verse 26. Let's see what is the rivers of water. Ephesians 5. It says, this man or this woman shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Ephesians 5, 26, read that. The book of Ephesians chapter 5, verse 26. That he might sanctify and cleanse it uh -huh. with the washing of water by the word. With the washing of water by the word. The washing of water by the word. So this man, when it go back to Psalms chapter 1, verse 3. Psalms chapter 1, verse 3. The book of Psalms, chapter 1, verse 3. Come on. And he shall be like a tree uh -huh. planted by the river of water. Because, yes, guess what? You as a tree, you are rooted and grounded. You are grounded and settled by the word of God. You have taken root in this Bible. Your spirit has taken root in God's law. Now you are growing. The Lord, the water, which is the word of God, is feeding your spirit so that the fruit can come out. That is what we're reading here. And he shall be like a tree. This is some heavy stuff right here. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, by the word of God, grounded and settled. Hmm. Read on. That bringeth forth his fruit 
in his season. You see that thing? You're going to bring forth your fruit. His your leaf or also no. shall not wither. Wait. And whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Okay, what the hell? It says, he shall be like a tree, okay, planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. You're going to bring your understanding at the right season. Meaning every season, you're going to bring forth understanding. He says, he sh and says, and says, and, and bringeth forth his fruit, his understanding, the fruit of your spirit in his season. Watch this. Give me Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5 verse 22. This is the fruit that you're going to bring in your season. Galatians 5 verse 22. Read that. Galatians chapter 5 verse 22. Read. But the fruit of the Spirit is love. The fruit of the Spirit is love. The fruit of the Spirit is love. So go back to Psalms chapter 1 verse 3. Uh, Psalms chapter 1 verse 3. Read that. Psalms chapter 1 verse 3. And he shall be like a tree uh -huh. planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth, that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. You see that part right there? That bringeth forth his fruit in his season. What is the fruit? The fruit of your spirit. The fruit of your spirit because now the laws of God, your spirit is rooted and settled in God's commandments. The laws of God, you have been fed now with God's commandment, his wisdom, his dark saying, his parables, okay? Go back to where he was at, Galatians 5, verse 22. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. Read. But the fruit of the Spirit is love. So these are the things that you're going to start to have. The fruit of the Spirit is love. Keeping of God's commandment. That's the first fruit of the Spirit. Read on. Joy. You see that part right there? Joy. Joy is the fruit of the Spirit. Because now the fruits are starting to come out because you are rooted and grounded. You are, your spirit has taken root in the laws of God. Now the laws, the most that God is doing what? He's making you to be fruitful. You start to what? You start to give life to other what? To the fruits now that people can eat the fruits of your spirit. Wait. Peace. Peace. You're going to have peace. Rest. Read on. Long suffering. That goes into patience. Come on. Gentleness. Gentleness. Read on. Goodness. Mm -hmm. Faith. Read. Meekness. Temperance. Mm -hmm. Against such, there is no law. So meekness is obedience to the laws of God. Meekness is obedience to the laws of God. Don't confuse meekness with weakness. Meekness is not weakness. Meekness is how you humble your spirit down to the laws of God. Okay, go back to Psalms now. Chapter 1. Psalms chapter 1 and verse 3 again. Psalms chapter 1 verse 3. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water uh -huh. that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. Three. His leaf also shall not wither. Come on, his what? His leaf also shall not wither. It says his leaf also shall not wither. The leaf is going into what? Your understanding. Your understanding will keep increasing in time. Your understanding will just keep increasing. Your wisdom, knowledge, and understanding will increase. His leaf also shall not wither. His understanding will not fail because the Lord is with you. Watch this. Give me the book of Revelation chapter 22. Revelation 22 and verse 2. Start at verse 1. Revelation chapter 22, verse 1. Uh -huh. And he showed me a pure river of water of life. Come on. Clear as crystal. Uh -huh. Proceeding out of the throne, out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. So he says he saw a pure river of water of life. That pure river of water of life is the word of God that we read in Ephesians 5:26. The verse I want is verse 2. Go ahead. In the midst of the streets of it. And on either side of the river was there the tree of life. Was there the what? Was there the tree of life? Was there the tree of life? Let's understand what the tree of life is. Give me the book of Sirach, chapter 19, verse 19. 
It says, in the midst of the seat of it, of this river, it says, on the either side of the river was there the tree of life. Serat 19, verse 19. Read that. Ecclesiastes chapter 19, verse 19. The knowledge of the commandments of the Lord is the doctrine of life. And they that do things that please him shall receive the fruit of the tree of immortality. You see that thing? It says the knowledge of the commandments of the Lord is the doctrine of life. And they that do things that please him shall receive the fruit of the tree of immortality. The fruit of the tree of immortality is the keeping of God's laws. Because when you keep God's commandments, you're going to receive the fruit of the tree of immortality. That's the tree of life. The fruit of the tree of immortality comes from the tree of life. And how do you get that? You keep the laws of God. Go back to Revelation 22, verse 2. Revelation 22, verse 2. Wait. In the midst of the streets of it, and on either side of the river, was there the tree of life. The tree of life, come on. Which bear 12 manner of fruits. Which bear 12 manner of fruits. The 12 manner of fruits. Give me that in Second Ezra chapter two, verse seventeen. Second Ezra two, verse seventeen. Second Ezra chapter two, verse seventeen. Fear not, thou mother of the children, uh -huh. for I have chosen thee, saith the Lord. Pray. For thy help will I send. Will I send my servant Esau no, no. and Jeremiah? Essay, essay. That's Isaiah. Essay, that's Isaiah. Read that again, verse 18. Second Ezra chapter 2, verse 18. For thy help will I send my servants, Essay and Jeremiah. And that's, Jeremy. that's Jeremiah, come on. After whose counsel I have sanctified and prepared for thee 12 trees laden with diverse fruits. You see that thing? It says, I for I am prepared for thee 12 trees laden with diverse fruits. The 12 trees that are laden with diverse fruit is making reference to the 12 tribes of Israel with the understanding that the Lord will give unto us. Go back to where was that? Revelation 22, verse 2. Revelation chapter 22, verse 2. Come on. In the midst of the streets of it, and on either side of the river, was there the tree of life. Uh -huh. Made 12 men of fruit. Really? And yielded her fruit every month. He says, and this tree was going to yield fruit every month. Meaning what? The fruit of understanding. We read the fruit of the spirit. Love, meekness, gentleness, long-suffering, okay, temperance, joy, peace. Those are the fruits of the spirit because our people don't have that. Okay? Joy, peace, they don't have that. He says, and it yielded her fruit every month. Meaning every month, there was new understanding that was coming out. You see that thing right there? Go ahead. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nation. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nation. The leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nation. So when it says, go back to Psalm chapter 1. Psalm chapter 1 verse 3. Psalm chapter 1 verse 3. Mm -hmm. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in a season. His leaf also shall not wither. His understanding, because his understanding will not wither. Because guess what? His understanding is for what? What is the purpose of his understanding? For the healing of the nation. Because that's why it says, and his leaf also shall not wither. That's what we read in Revelation 22, verse 3, when, verse, 2, verse 2, and it says, and it says, um, which the 12 manner of fruit, the 12 manner of fruit is symbolic for what? The 12 tribes of Israel. And yielded her fruit every month. Meaning what? Every month was new understanding coming out. Okay? And the leaves thereof, and the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nation, the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. So when it says his understanding shall not wither, because his understanding is leaves is for the healing of the 12 tribes of Israel. Read that part again. And his what? His leaf shall not what? His leaf also shall not wither. Uh -huh. 
and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. You see that thing? And whatsoever he doeth is going to prosper. Why? Because he's rooted, he's rooted and settled. This man is like a tree. The more if the tree is sitting on good ground, you understand? Watch this. Give me the book of Luke. Luke chapter. Let me see. Let me see something. Okay. Uh, Luke chapter 8, verse 15. That's what I want. Luke 8, verse 15. Watch this. Remember, remember he said, this man shall, this man or woman shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Right? Watch this. Luke chapter 8, verse 15. Read that. The book of Luke chapter 8, verse 15. Read. But that on the good ground are they. On the what? On the good ground are they. On the good ground. is says, but that on the good ground are they. Go ahead. Which in an honest and good heart. Which in an honest and good heart. In sincerity and in truth. In an honest and good heart. Read on. Having heard the word. Uh -huh. Keep it. Read. And bring forth fruit with patience. That's the key right there. On a good ground, you're going to bring forth fruit with patience. If you are rooted and grounded, if you are rooted and settled on a good ground, guess what? You're going to bring forth fruit with patience, the fruit of the Spirit. You are going to be productive. You'll be able to produce. You're going to be able to bring new understanding every month of the scriptures. For the what? For the healing of the 12 tribes of Israel. For the healing of the nations. That is the key right there. For the healing of the 12 tribes of Israel. Give me that in Sirach 33, verse 17. Okay? Ecclesiastes, chapter 33, verse 17. Ecclesiastes, chapter 33, verse 17. Read. Really? Consider that I labored not for myself only, uh -huh. but for all them that seek learning. You see that thing? It says you don't study for yourself. You are not here for yourself only. You are here so that you can learn and get yourself together and what? And be a benefit to your nation for the healing of the 12 tribes of Israel. That's why it says your understanding must not wither. Why? Because your leaves, your leaf, which is your understanding, is for the healing of your people that do not know this Bible, that do not know who they are according to the Bible, that they are the children of Israel, that they are Jews, that the reason why we are at the bottom, the reason why we are poor, the reason why we are oppressed, the reason why we, ex we, we experience racism, apartheid, it is because we broke the laws of God. And we must return back to this Bible so the Lord can defend us. The Lord, the Most High God, can pass over the nations and destroy them. Watch this. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 31, verse 9. Isaiah, chapter 31, verse 9. Isaiah, chapter 31, verse 9. Read. And he shall pass over to his stronghold for fear. Watch, watch this. Give me um, start at verse start at verse 4. Isaiah 31 verse 4. Isaiah gonna, 31 verse 4. We're going to read down. Okay? Watch this. Read. For thus hath the Lord spoken unto me like as the lion and the young lion roaring on his prey. You see that thing? is that the Lord has spoken unto me like as, as like as the lion is the, the, the lion and the young lion roaring on his prey. So the Lord has spoken to us as a lion and young lion roaring on his prey. The prey is our enemies. Go ahead. When a multitude of shepherds is called forth against him. Against him. So the multitude of shepherds that is called against the lion and the young lion. Watch this. He will not be afraid of their voice. Nor base himself for the noise of them. He says that he says, you see that he says the Lord is not going to what he's not going to be afraid of the voices of the shepherds, nor abase himself for the noise of them. Meaning what? Meaning bring himself low. You understand? He says he's not gonna bring himself low for the noise of them. Even whether they make noise, he says he's not gonna abase himself. You see how big the nations are. We are not going to abase ourselves. The Lord is with us. Read. So shall the Lord of hosts come down to fight for Mount Zion. You see that part right there? So shall the Lord of hosts come.
come down to fight for Mount Zion. The Lord is going to fight for us. Understand that. Read. So shall the Lord of hosts come down to fight for Mount Zion. Read. And for the hill thereof. And for the hill thereof, meaning what? The holy hill of Zion. Read on. As birds flying. As birds flying. So will the, as birds flying, so will the Lord of hosts defend Jerusalem. You ever seen a bird going? You ever see an eagle? The eagle fly is the is what? It's, it goes to high altitude. An eagle is a bird of prey. It's be looking for a prey, a prey at high altitude. And when it comes down, it devours the prey. Is that the Lord will be like that? As birds fly, so will the Lord of hosts defend Jerusalem. You see that thing? How will the Lord, when it says the Lord fly, the Lord is going to come down with his chariot, with his UFOs, as they call them. You understand? As the birds fly, so will the Lord of hosts defend Jerusalem. Go ahead. Defending also, he will deliver it. De defending also, he will deliver Zion. Come on. And passing over, he will preserve it. You see that thing? And passing over, he will preserve it. He will, the Lord is going to preserve us. Okay? Jump down to verse 9. Isaiah chapter 31, verse 9. Come on. And he shall pass over to his stronghold to fear. Mm -hmm. And his princes shall be afraid of the ensign, uh -huh. saith the Lord. Wait. Really? Whose fire is in Zion uh -huh. and his furnace in Jerusalem. So the Lord's fire is in Jeru is in Zion and his furnace in Jerusalem. Because the Lord is going to pass over Babylon the Great, which is America today. He's going to pass over it and destroy it. The same way the Lord passed over Egypt when we were slaves in Egypt and destroyed Egypt. That's some heavy stuff right here. Watch this. Give me, give me the book of wisdom of Solomon chapter 7, verse 22. You see, when you are rooted and grounded, grounded and settled in the laws of God, guess what? Definitely you will find the pillar of rest. This Bible is our rest. The Bible is a pillar of the spirit of Christ. He is our, he is our king. He is our anchor. Okay, understand that. Wisdom of Solomon. Wisdom of Solomon. Wisdom of Solomon, uh, chapter 7. And verse, let me see, let me see what I want. Thank you. Um, hmm. Verse 7. Watch this. Wisdom of Solomon chapter, yes. No, 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 no. Hmm. Yeah, give me Wisdom of Solomon 7. Start at the 22. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 7, verse 22. Watch this. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 7, verse 22. For wisdom, which is the worker of all things, taught me. Uh -huh. For in her is an understanding spirit. So in wisdom is an understanding spirit. So the wisdom of the Most High God will give you a will give you an understanding spirit. That's what comes with wisdom, an understanding spirit. Read on. For in her is an understanding spirit, holy, uh -huh. one only. Come on. Manifold. Manifold meaning what? Subtle. Meaning what? There's a lot of pockets. To the wisdom that the Lord has. Multiple pockets. That's why it says holy. One only. Manifold. Go ahead. Subtle. Subtle. Read. Lively. Lively. Full yeah. of life. Lively. These are the, this is the fruit. The, what we are reading here, these are the fruits of the spirit right here. You understand? An understanding spirit, that's the fruit. Holy. One only. Manifold. Subtle. Lively, meaning full of light, clear, no confusion. Those are the fruits of the spirit. Go ahead. Undefiled. Undefiled, because when you have the wisdom of the most high God, you will not be deceived. You will not be defiled. Watch this. Give me the book of Titus, chapter 1. Titus, chapter 1, and verse... Let me see, let me see. Titus, chapter 1, start at verse 15. Titus chapter 1, verse 15. Unto the pure, all things are pure. Uh -huh. But unto them that are defiled and unbelieving, 
is nothing pure. You see that part right there? But unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure. Because when you don't believe, that means you don't apply the laws of God. So therefore, you are going to be defiled by the philosophies of the world. Okay, come on. Titus chapter 1 verse 15. Unto the pure, all things are pure. But unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure. Read. But even their mind and conscience is defiled. You see that thing? Their mind and conscience is defiled. Their breath is corrupt. When it says even their mind and conscience is defiled, their conscience is seared with a hot iron. You can't do nothing for them. You understand? Only the Lord can pull them out of that thing. Go back to where was that? With Solomon 7 verse 22. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 7, verse 22. Come on. For wisdom, which is the worker of all things, taught me. For in her is an understanding spirit, mm -hmm. holy, one only, manifold, subtle, lively, clear, undefiled. Plain, you see that not thing? subject. Plain, plain, meaning make it plain. It, it's easy to understand. That's why it says plain. Simplicity that is in Christ. That's what wisdom is going to teach. That's the fruit of the spirit right there. Plain. Plainness of speech. Okay? The Apostle Paul mentioned about this. Thing. Give me that in Hebrews. Um, in 1 Corinthians. Is it 1 Corinthians? Um, give me one second. Uh, give me that in... Give me 1 Corinthians 13, verse 12 first. First Corinthians 13, verse 12. For now we see through a glass, darkly, but then face to face. Come on. Okay, read that again. Read it right. 1 Corinthians 13, verse 12. For now we see through a glass, darkly. No, no. It says... Uh, for now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even as also I am known. Meaning what? When the Lord returns, guess what? We are not going to see through a glass darkly. The Lord is going to clear things for us so we understand things that we don't understand right now. Watch this. Give me the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 12. 2 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 12. Mm -hmm. Seeing then that we have such hope, we use great plainness of speech. You see that thing? Seeing then that we have such hope, we use great plainness of speech. Meaning what? We keep it, make it plain. Don't complicate the situation. Don't complicate the scripture. Keep, make it plain. Keep it simple. Read that part again. Second Corinthians 3 verse 12. Seeing then that we have such hope, we use great plainness of speech. Come on. Verse 13. And not as Moses, which puts a veil over his face, uh -huh. that the children of Israel could not steadfastly look to the end of that which is abolished. You see that thing? That's talking about the old covenant. But the veil is making reference to the old covenant. You understand? It's also going into what? The understanding. Because most, there was a lot of things that Moses was given, which was deep dark parables, which is not easy to understand, okay? But now it's saying um, we use great plainness of speech. That's why when Christ spoke, a lot of the, a lot of things that we read in the Gospels, they are direct, they are plain, they are simple to understand. Not the parables, but when Christ spoke, when, I'm, I'm, when I said, I'm coming to cause division, it's simple. I'm not coming to bring peace on earth, but a storm. That's simple to understand. Okay, great plainness of speech. Go back to Wisdom of Solomon chapter 7. Okay, verse 22 again. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 7, verse 22. Of all things taught me. In her is an understanding, an understanding spirit, holy, one only, manifold, subtle, lively, clear, undefiled, plain. Plain. Not, not subject. Not what? Not subject to hurt. Not subject to hurt. Because if you are subject to hurt, that means you are not rooted and grounded. You are not settled 
and ground it in the Bible. That's what that means. He says you are not rooted and settled in the Bible. Okay? Not subject to hurt. Go ahead. Loving the thing that is good. Loving the thing that is good. That is the truth of the spirit. You must love the things that are good. What is that? The laws of God. Come on. Quick. Uh -huh. Which cannot be let it. Which cannot be stopped. Read. Ready to do good. The wisdom of the most High God is always ready to do good. Okay, come on. Watch this. Read. Kind to men. What? Kind to men. Kind to men. Wisdom of the most High God will give you kindness so that you can be kind to your brothers and sisters. Kind to men. Read verse 23 again. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 7, verse 23. Kind to men. Kind to men. Come on. Steadfast. Steadfast. Give me that in Sirach 5 and 10. Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 10. Be steadfast in thy understanding and let thy word be the same. Uh -huh. Read that again. Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 10. Be steadfast in thy understanding mm -hmm. and let thy word be the same. It says, be steadfast in thy understanding and let thy word be the same. Thing. Meaning what? Be disciplined in your understanding, not move left or right. Don't be double-minded. Be steadfast in your understanding and let thy word be the same. Don't be double-tongued. Go back to where was that? Wisdom of Solomon 7 verse 23. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 7 verse 23. Kind to man, steadfast, sure, mm -hmm. free from care. Free from care. Okay, go ahead. Having all power, uh -huh. overseeing all things, overseeing all things, see? and going through all understanding, pure uh -huh. and most subtle spirits. You see that thing? That's that's what wisdom will give you. These are the fruits of wisdom. Now, the fruits of the spirit. That's that's when you are rooted and grounded. If you continue in the faith, when you con if you, when you continue in the faith. These are the fruits of the spirit that you're going to receive because you are going to be rooted and grounded in this Bible. The Bible will be a pillar of rest. Rest unto your souls because this is what your soul will feed on. You understand? Understanding. Plainness of speech. Okay? Kind. Kindness. Steadfastness. Sure. Free from care. Having all power to overcome sin. Overseeing all things. And going through all understanding, which is the laws of God, the whole Bible, pure and most subtle spirit. That's when you have found rest in this Bible. These are the fruits that the Lord will give unto you. Okay? These are the fruits that the Lord will give unto you. Watch this. Give me Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 7. Wisdom of, Sol so Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 7, and verse 7. Watch this. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 7, verse 7. Wherefore I prayed, and understanding was given me. Mm -hmm. I called upon God, and the spirit of wisdom came to me. I called upon God, and the spirit of wisdom came to me. Go ahead. Verse 8. I preferred her before scepters and, and thrones. You see that part right there? And esteem. Hold on. He says he preferred wisdom before scepters and thrones. Watch this, hold this. Give me Second Chronicles, my favorite chapter. Second Chronicles chapter one. Watch this. Second Chronicles chapter one. Okay, Second Chronicles chapter one, verse seven. Second Chronicles chapter one, verse seven. In that night did God appear unto Solomon and said unto him, Ask what I shall give thee. So, King, the Most High God is asking King Solomon what he should be given. Read on. And Solomon said unto God, Thou hast showed great mercy unto David my father, and hast made me to reign in his stead. Come on. Now, O Lord God, let thy promise unto David my father be established. Mm -hmm. For thou hast made me king over a people like the dust of the earth in multitude. Because the children of Israel, we cannot be measured nor numbered. Okay? We, are, we outnumber all nations on earth. Read on. 
Give me now wisdom and knowledge. You see that part right there? Give me now wisdom and knowledge. That's why he said, King Solomon said, I prefer it before scepters and thrones. He preferred wisdom before he was, he was made the king. He says, give me now wisdom and knowledge. Go ahead. That I may go out and come in before this people. Read. Really? For who can judge this thy people that is so great? You see that thing? Who can judge this thy people that is so great? That's why he wanted the wisdom and the knowledge. He wanted the wisdom and knowledge from the most high God so that he can be able to judge the children of Israel righteously. That's why he asked for that thing. Read. Really? And God said unto so and God said to Solomon. Because this was in thine heart, and thou hast not asked riches, wealth, or honor, uh -huh. nor the life, nor the life of thine enemies, neither yet hast thou asked long life. Really? But hast asked wisdom and knowledge for thyself. But you have asked that wisdom. Thou, hold on. That there, that that because it says what? But has asked wisdom and knowledge for thyself. Why? That you may what? That thou mayest judge my people over the whom, over whom I have made thee king. So the reason why he asked wisdom, he asked for wisdom and knowledge before, before to before the kingship, he says that thou mayest judge my people over whom I have made thee king. Watch this. You see that? Read verse 11 again. I want to show you something. Verse 11, one more again. Second Chronicles. Chapter 1, verse 11. And God said to Solomon, Because this was in thine heart, Stop right and there. thou hast not. Because what? Because this was in thine heart. So, what, what, you, what you need to realize is that King Solomon in verse 10, he said, Give me now wisdom and knowledge that I may go out and come in before these people, for we can judge this thy people that is so great. The next verse says, And God said unto Solomon, because this was in thine heart. You see that part right there? Because this was in your heart. Give me the right 42 verse 20. Ecclesiastes. Chapter 42 verse 20. It says, because this was in thine heart. Because a lot of the times when men and women pray, right? You will pray to the Lord. You ask for one thing, but what in your, what's in your heart does not match what you are asking for. You might be asking the Lord for one thing, but what's in your mind that's what the Lord looks at. The Lord doesn't look at your lips moving. He looks at what's in your heart. You see that part? Because you might be saying, I'm poor. I need such and such. I need, Father, bless me with, 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 uh, with, uh, with, with, um, with a good financial whatever situation. But you're not asking for that because you want to help your people. No, you're asking for that so you can what? So you can go out for coma buying big expensive cars and all of that, the Lord's not going to give you that because you, you are only just asking that so that only you can benefit. The Lord will not give you. Okay? There are 42 verse 20. Watch this. Please ask us to 42 verse 20. Start at verse 18. Start at 42 verse 18. Ecclesiastes 42 verse 18. He seeketh out the deep and the heart. He does what? And could he seeketh out the deep uh -huh. and the heart. So the most high God, he seeketh out. He seeketh out, meaning he searches out the deep and the heart, meaning your mind. The Lord searches your mind. Go ahead. And considereth their crafty devices. You see that thing? Meaning what? The plans that the mind has. You see, the mind is wicked. The mind is evil. So the Lord searched for that. He says, and considereth their crafty devices meaning your evil plan. You see that your wicked imagination. Go ahead. For the Lord knoweth all that may be known. The Lord knoweth all that may be known in your mind. Read. And he beholdeth the signs of the world. Watch this. Read on. He declareth the things that are past. He does what? And for to come. He declareth the things that are past. The Lord will declare the things that are past. Read. He declared the things that are past and for to come. Meaning the future. Read. And revealeth the steps of hidden things. And he does what? And revealeth the steps of hidden things. The most high God will reveal the steps of hidden things. Meaning what? 
he reveals, he's going to reveal by step by step all the things that are hidden in the mind of man. That's what the Lord does. Watch this next verse. Verse 20. Uh -huh. No thought escapeth him. You see that part right there? No thought will escape the mind. With no, no thought in your mind will escape the Lord. Really? Neither any word is hidden from him. You see that part? So a lot of the times that you asking the Lord for something, but in your mind you've got something else. The Lord doesn't look at, he doesn't look at what you say. He doesn't listen to what you say. He looks at your mind. He searches your mind to see where your mind is at. So why am I bringing this up? Go back to 2 Chronicles chapter 1. 2 Chronicles chapter 1 and verse 10. Second Chronicles, one of us said, Read. Give me now wisdom and knowledge that I, may, that I may go out and come in before this people. For who can trust this people, this thy people that is so great? So now, this is what King Solomon is asking for. Let's see the next verse. Watch this. And God said to Solomon, Because this was in thine heart. Stop right there. So, verse 10, King Solomon is asking for wisdom and knowledge. So that he can judge the people of the nation of Israel. Verse 11, the Lord is saying, because this was in your mind. Because how did the Lord know? The Lord searches the mind of the man. The Lord searches the mind of man. And when he searched Solomon's mind, what did he find? He find that's exactly what he was asking for. He wasn't double-minded. What he was asking for, that's what that is what the Lord found in his mind. And guess what the Lord did? Verse 12. First Chronicles, Second Chronicles, chapter 1, verse 12. Wisdom and knowledge is granted unto thee. Uh -huh. And I will give thee riches and wealth and honor, such as none of the kings have had that have been before thee, neither shall they any after thee have, did, have the like. You see that thing? Now, verse 12, the Lord is responding to his prayer. It says, Wisdom and knowledge is granted unto you. I'm going to give you this thing now. Why? Because when the Lord searched Solomon's mind, he found that what he was asking for, that's exactly what was in his mind. There was no hidden agenda. Watch this. Uh, go back to Wisdom of Solomon, uh, chapter 7, and verse 7 again. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 7, verse 7. Wherefore I prayed, and understanding was given me. Mm -hmm. I called upon God, and the spirit of wisdom, came to me. Read. I preferred her before scepters and thrones. He says he preferred wisdom before scepters and thrones. And that's what we read in Second Chronicles. Come on. And esteemed riches, nothing in comparison of her. He says you cannot, there's no riches that you can compare to the riches that you're going to find in the wisdom of the Lord. Watch this. Give me wisdom. Give me Proverbs. Okay. Give me Proverbs. Because when your mind is settled and grounded, guess what? This is what happens to you. Watch this. Give me Proverbs chapter 8. Proverbs chapter 8 and verse... Start of verse um, 10. Proverbs chapter 8 verse 10. Proverbs chapter 8 verse 10. Come on. Receive my instruction and not silver and acknowledge rather than the choice, then then choice gold. He says, receive my instruction and not silver, and knowledge rather than choice gold. So the instruction and knowledge is more precious than silver and gold. That's what Solomon is saying, right? That's the same thing you just read in Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 7, and verse 8, when it says, I prefer it before scepters and thrones, and esteemed riches, nothing in comparison of her. Read. Verse 11. Verse, for wisdom is better than rubies. Wisdom is better than rubies. Wisdom is better than rubies. Come on. And all the things that may be desired are not to be compared to it. You see that thing? And all things, meaning everything that you can desire upon this earth, you cannot compare it to the wisdom of the most High God. Read again. Proverbs 8, verse 11. Come on. Wisdom is better than rubies. Uh -huh. And all the things that may be desired 
are not to be compared to it. You cannot compare wisdom with anything. Read on. Verse 12. I, wisdom, dwell with prudence mm. and find out knowledge of witty inventions. You see that thing? I, wisdom, dwell with prudence. Meaning what? Dwell with the extremely wise. Read on. It says, and, found out, and find out knowledge of witty inventions. Meaning the evil inventions that man has in his mind, he says, through wisdom, you can find them out. Read. The fear of the Lord you is know to what? hate him. Hold on. Jump down. Read, read, read verse 15. Read verse 15. Proverbs 8 verse 15. By me, kings reign. He said what? And prince. By me, kings reign. So by wisdom, kings reign. The most High God, he sets up kingdoms by his wisdom. He sets up kings and princesses and all leaders through his wisdom. Read. And princes decree justice. And princes decree justice. Read on. By me, princes rule. By wisdom, princes rule. We are the princes. We are the kings because Christ is the king of kings. We're the king. Read. By me, princes rule. And nobles, even all the judges of the earth. You see that thing? Even all the judges of the earth. Watch this. Give me Wisdom of Solomon chapter 1. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 1 verse 1. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 1 verse 1. Come on. Love righteousness, ye that be judges of the earth. He says, love righteousness, ye that be judges of the earth. Who are the judges of the earth? We are. The 12 tribes of Israel, we are the judges of the earth. Read that again. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 1. Uh -huh. Love righteousness, ye that, be, ye, that judge, ye that be judges of the earth. Think of the Lord with a good heart, and in simplicity of the heart seek him. Read that part again. I'm sorry. It says what? And, and think of the Lord with a what? Think of the Lord with a good heart and in simplicity of heart, seek him. You see that part? And in simplicity of heart, seek the Lord. Go back to Proverbs chapter 8, verse 16. Proverbs chapter 8, verse 16. Uh -huh. By me, princes rule and nobles, even all the judges of the earth. By, 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 by wisdom, the princes rule and nobles, that's the leaders, even all the judges of the earth, because the princes, the nobles, those, the, the kings, the princes, the nobles, those are the judges of the earth. Jump down to verse 18. Proverbs 8, verse 18. Riches and honor are with me, yea, durable riches and righteousness. You see that thing? If you want the true, if you want true riches, if you want true riches, okay, and true honor, it says, yeah, durable riches and righteousness, meaning what? Riches that will endure forever. That is what the Lord is saying right there. Okay, watch this. Uh, give me one second. Okay. Read that part again. Proverbs 8, verse 18. Mm -hmm. Riches and honor are with me. Yea, durable riches and righteousness. Come on, verse 19. My fruit is better than gold. My fruit is better than what? My fruit is better than gold. So the fruit of wisdom is better than gold. We just read the fruit of wisdom in Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 7, verse 22. Those are the fruits of wisdom. Galatians 5, 22, 23. Those are the fruits of wisdom, the fruit of the spirit. Go ahead. My fruit is better than gold, yea, than fine gold, and my revenue than choice silver. And my revenue, my fruit is better than choice gold, yea, than fine gold, and my revenue than choice silver. Meaning the reward, the type of fruit that you're going to get from wisdom, they are durable. They, they endure forever. That is what the Lord is teaching us here. Watch this. Jump down. Um, to the read verse 20 and 21. Proverbs 8 verse 20. 
I lead in the way of righteousness. That's wisdom. In the midst of the path of judgment. Come on. That I may cause those that love me to inherit substance mm -hmm. and I will fill their treasures. Read verse 21 again. Proverbs 8 verse 21. That I may cause those that love me to inherit substance. Come on. And I will and I will fill their treasures. So he says that I may cause those that love me to inherit substance and I will fill their treasures. Give me Proverbs chapter 2. Watch this. Give me Proverbs chapter 2. Let's start at verse 1. Proverbs 2 verse 1. Proverbs chapter 2 verse 1. Uh -huh. My son, if thou receive my words and hide my commandments with thee. Uh -huh. And if you receive the word of God, the word of God is the commandment. My son, if thou will receive my words and hide my commandments with thee. So the word of God is the commandment. Come on. So that thou incline thine ear unto wisdom and apply thine heart to understanding. He says, apply your mind to the understanding of this Bible. Come on. Yea, if thou criest off the knowledge and liftest up thy voice for understanding. Read. Really? If thou seekest her as silver and searchest for her as for hid treasures. You see that thing? You see these treasures? When it says, go back to Proverbs 8.21 again. Proverbs chapter 8, verse 21. Come on. That I may cause thee, that I may cause those that love me to inherit substance, and I will fill their treasures. When he says he's going to fill our the substance, is the treasures that the Lord is going to fill us with. What is that treasure? Proverbs chapter 2, verse 4 again. Proverbs chapter 2, verse 4. Read. Really? If thou seekest her as silver and searchest for her, for her as for late as for hid treasures so wisdom is what wisdom is what he says you must search for the wisdom of the most High god which is the commandment as for hidden treasures as for the hidden treasures that is what the lord is teaching us right here so when he says he's going to give us what we will inherit substance and i will fill their treasures the lord says he's going to fill us with his wisdom that's better than choice gold Nothing can be compared to that thing. The Lord is going to fill us with his wisdom. Once we have that wisdom, guess what? We will rule the earth. Everything else is just an afterthought. You understand? It's a, it's a byproduct of that wisdom. The riches, the wealth, the dominion, the rulership. Guess what? They're living forever. Those are the byproducts of us being filled with the wisdom of the most High God. I hope everybody understands that thing. Watch this. Go back to Wisdom of Solomon. Chapter 7, Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 7, and verse 9. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 7, verse 9. Uh -huh. Neither compared I her any precious stone. Neither compared I unto her any precious stone. Mm -hmm. Because all gold in respect of her is as a, is as a little sand. And silver shall be counted as clay before her. You see that thing? Listen what he's saying. Because remember in verse 8, it says, and as seems riches, nothing in comparison of her. Meaning you can't compare wisdom with nothing. Neither compare I unto her any precious stone. You can't compare wisdom to any precious stone, he's saying. Because guess what? Wisdom is a hidden treasure. It's more precious than fine gold. Understand that thing. And it says, because all gold in respect of her is as a little sand, and silver shall be counted as clay before her. Read on. I loved her above health and beauty, mm. and chose to oh, have no. her... Wait, wait, wait. Read verse 10 again. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter, six, chapter 7, verse 10. I loved her above health and beauty. It says, he loved wisdom above health and beauty. Is he saying health is not important? No, he's not saying that. Because once you have that wisdom, you can understand the importance of health. You're going to understand the importance of taking care of yourself. That's what he's saying right there. So he's not saying um, you loving the scriptures is about uh, health. Because you knowing the scriptures is going to give you the sense to know the importance of you being healthy. You're going to know the importance of you taking care of yourself. 
looking beautiful and all that. That's what he's saying right there. He's going to give you the sense. So that's why I'm giving you the sense what he's saying right here. Read the part again. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 7, verse 10. Come on. I loved her above health and beauty and chose to have her instead of light. Uh -huh. For the light that cometh from her never goes out. He says, the light that cometh from wisdom never goes out. What is that light? Give me Proverbs 6, 23. You know what? Give me Baruch 4. I think that's a better one. Give me Baruch. Baruch chapter 4, verse 1. Watch this. He says, the light that cometh from her never goes out. Baruch 4, verse 1. Baruch chapter 4, verse 1. Mm -hmm. This is the book of the commandments of God and the law that endureth forever. Uh -huh. All they that keep it shall come to life, but such as leave it shall die. So this Bible is a book of the commandments and the law that endures forever. So we are commanded to keep it so we can come to life. Next verse. Turn thee, O Jacob, mm -hmm. and take hold of it. Take hold of the what? Take hold of the Bible, the commandments. Read. Walk in the presence of the, of the light thereof. Walk in the presence of the commandments, meaning apply the laws of God to your life. Walk in the presence of the light thereof. That's the commandments. Read. That thou mayest be illuminated. That thou may be illuminated, that the Lord can give you understanding, wisdom, and knowledge. That's what he's talking about right there. Okay? Go back to Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 7, verse 10 again. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 7, verse 10. I loved her above health and beauty, and chose to have her instead of light. For the light that cometh from her never goeth out. The light that comes from wisdom never goes out. Watch this. Jump down to verse 13. Verse 13. I learn diligently and do communicate her liberty. Uh -huh. I do not hide her riches. I do not hide her riches because the wisdom has riches. Understanding, subtlety, craft, uh, witty, wittiness, wit. Wisdom will give you wit. You understand? It will give you discretion, okay? Kindness, joy, peace, love, long-suffering, gentleness, prudence, meekness. That's what wisdom will give you. That's where it says, I learned diligently and do communicate it liberally. Meaning what? You learn the laws of God. It's not just about you knowing it. You must teach that to your people. That's what he's saying right there, okay? He says, I do not hide his riches. You don't hide the riches that come with wisdom. Meaning what? So our people can apply God's laws to their life so they can change their thinking. Go ahead. For she is as a treasure unto men that never faileth. You see that thing? Wisdom is a treasure. The same treasure we read in Proverbs 2 verse 4. Wisdom is a treasure unto men that never faileth. Wisdom will never fail you. That's why it says it cannot be lettered. It cannot be theft. It cannot be stopped. For the light that go, coming from her can never, what? Can never go out. Read verse 10 again. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 7 verse 10. I loved her above health and beauty mm -hmm. and chose to have her instead of light. For the light that cometh from her never goeth out. For the light that cometh from wisdom never goeth out. That's what we read in, in, in Psalm chapter 1 verse 3. He says, he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. His leaves also shall not wither. Meaning your under, the understanding that comes from you will never go out. Why? Because you are rooted and settled. You are grounded and settled in the laws of God. Your spirit is deeply rooted in God's commandments. You have rest. Rest unto your soul. Okay, read on. Verse 14. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 7 verse 14. For she is a treasure unto men that never faileth, which they that use become the friends of God. Become the what? Which they that use become the friends of God. They that apply God's commandments, you become a friend of God. If you apply the laws of God, you will become a friend of God. You see that part right there? For she is a treasure unto men that never faileth, which they that use become the friends of God. Come on. Being commended 
for the gifts that come from learning. You see that thing? Because you must learn, you must study. You must study the Bible. You must study and ask questions. That's how you're going to get those gifts. You must study and apply. When you apply, you examine yourself to get rid of the things that you have. Watch this. Give me Acts 2.38. Okay, Acts chapter 2, verse 38. Because when you study, you start to understand the things that you are doing that are wrong and the things that you must get rid of out of your spirit so the most like God can increase your understanding in this truth. Acts 2, 38. Read that. The book of Acts chapter 2, verse 38. Read. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ uh -huh. for the remission of sins. So watch this. When hold on, when you repent, okay, he says you must be you must repent, meaning what to keep the laws of God and be baptized. To be baptized, meaning what you apply God's commandments to your life that the old man can die and the new man that the Lord wants can be born again. Read on for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift. Of the Holy Ghost. You see that thing? So the gift that we are reading about in Wisdom of Solomon 7 verse 14 is only going to come unto you. The treasures that come with wisdom, listen, you need to repent. You need to stop breaking God's commandment. You need to stop sinning. You must apply the laws of God so you may receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. That gift is the gift of what? Wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of the scriptures how to apply, when to apply the scriptures, and to what situation must you apply the laws of God and how. You see that thing? When you keep God's commandments, when you repent and apply, the Lord will give you the gift, the gift of the Holy Ghost, the understanding. So go back to Wisdom of Solomon chapter 7, verse 14 again. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 7, verse 14. Okay. So she is as a treasure, for she is a treasure and to men that never fail it. Uh -huh. They that use become the friends of God, being commended for the gifts that come from learning. You see that thing? Being commended for the gifts that come from learning. The only way you're going to receive the gift, you must study. And as you are studying, you are examining yourself. As you are examining yourself, you are repenting of your sins. Only then, you're going to be able to be, you're going to be commended for the gifts that come from your studies. That's how it is. But you must repent. The Lord, only then the Lord will increase. Understand that thing. The only time when the Lord will increase our understanding, we must keep his commandments. Watch this. Give me Sirach chapter 1, Ecclesiastical. I'm almost done. Ecclesiastical chapter 1. Watch this. Sirach chapter 1, verse 26. You know what? Start at verse 25. Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 25. The parables of knowledge are in the treasures of wisdom. Is I in the what? The parables of knowledge are in the treasures of wisdom. So now with the parables, meaning what? The meta, the, the dark sayings, the parables, the, the metaphors, the allegories, okay, the proverbs. The proverbs of knowledge are in the treasures of wisdom. For you to be able to get the parables, to understand the parables of knowledge, you must find the treasures of wisdom. What is the treasures of wisdom? The application of God's laws to your life. Okay, come on. But godliness is an abomination to a sinner. He says, but godliness is an abomination to a sinner. Because our people that hate the laws of God, they, don't, they are going to hate those that do good. Meaning those that apply the laws of God. Next verse. If thou desire wisdom, keep the commandments, uh -huh. and the Lord shall give her unto thee. Read that part again. Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 26. If thou desire wisdom, keep the commandments, and the Lord shall give her unto thee. If you desire wisdom, keep the commandments. It's that simple. If you desire wisdom, you must keep the commandments, and the Lord shall give her unto thee. But if you don't desire wisdom, you're not going to keep the commandments, and the Lord will not give you any wisdom. That's how this is. You know what? Jump up to verse 25. Read verse 25 again. 
Ecclesiastes chapter 1 verse 25. The parables of knowledge are in the treasures of wisdom. But godliness is an abomination to a sinner. So part of the parables of knowledge are in the treasures of wisdom. These parables, the things, the dark things, the things that are hard to understand, is that they are hidden. They are, you're going to find them in the treasures of wisdom. Those treasures of wisdom is what we read in Proverbs 2, verse 4, which is what? The commandments of the Most High God. Watch this. Give me Sarah 39, verse 1. Ecclesiastes chapter 39, verse 1. Read. But he that giveth his mind to the law of the Mordai and is occupied in the meditation thereof Read. will seek out the wisdom of all the ancient and be occupied in prophecies. You see that part right there? So it says, if you give your mind to the laws of the Most High God and you are occupied in the meditation of God's laws, you are meditating on God's laws. It says, we'll seek out the wisdom of all the ancient, all the ancient men, our forefathers, okay? And be occupied in prophecies. The only time you're going to be, you're going to be occupied in prophecies, the first thing that you must do, this is years, yes. Yeah. This first one right here, it's years. You understand? You must occupy your mind in the laws of God. You must meditate your mind on God's commandments. Then, the only then, you are going to be, you are going to be, you're going to occupy your mind in prophecy. Because you're not going to understand any prophecies in this Bible if you don't apply the laws of God to your life. Read on. He will keep the sayings of the renowned men. Uh -huh. And where subtle parables are, he will be there also. You see that thing? And where subtle, remember it says the fruit of wisdom is what? Subtlety. Wisdom is subtle. It says... Um, and where subtle parables are, he will be there also. Subtle parables, you're going to pick up subtle parables in the, in the scriptures. Okay? So, with that, brothers and sisters, I'm going to end the class right here. Okay? I'm going to end the class right here. Let's break break. Give me First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23. Okay? For I have received of the Lord that which also I deliver unto you. That the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same man also, he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do he, as oft as he drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as he eat this bread and took this cup, Ye to show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat his bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.